we get the whatever month we've determined we're in here we need to get the first day of the month that like i said that's how we determine where we're going to start our first button and display this calendar appropriately so that's what this does you use what is called um, sorry about that use what is called um, components so you get a um, uh, create a calendar and then this calendar object and you um, create a what's called a component and you can use these built-in methods to get um, to set um, which day you want so you can basically creating a new date out of the information we already have and we're saying hey we want to look at the first day of that month um, of this month and this year and so then we create a new date and then we use that new date right here to go ahead and get the the um, weekday of that and so that the weekday like i said is going to let you know is it was it a sunday monday tuesday wednesday thursday or friday right saturday or, um and th so that's critical that we use that and that gives you a number between one and seven and so right here i go ahead and um and change that to zero base for we're going to about to do a for loop and um, I have that all set to zero base so we well, that's why we subtract one from it um, and then this gives you the number of days in this month that we're looking at and so th that correlates to right here so that we have we have a for loop where we're going to start at one and we're going to go through and we're going to create buttons for each day in that month and we're going to base it upon we're going to start um, according to this new weekday variable, right? That note lets us know where we start um, for placing our first button on the screen, right? And that's why I use this right here. Um, it's all, this is a little logarithm that's based upon that new weekday variable to display the X and Y coordinates of the first button. And then every time that um, new weekday is greater than six, we drop down because we're starting a new week. So our Y variable drops down, right? And, and then right here, you see where I actually create the buttons and I give them each an ID, a tag. Um, that's critical that I give them that tag so that we can identify these buttons later when we click on them. And that way um, I can, in the pop-up screen, I can know, I know which day that I clicked and so that I can pass that date on to that pop-up screen that I showed you. Um, this right here, this part here has to do, um, like again, I said, with the parse database. If you're using parse or some other database system, um, you may want to have uh, a certain criteria to know if a certain criteria is met. And if so, then you can give the button a different background, right? And that's what I do here. So um, if this had session was equal to yes, it was red, else it was green. And this only gets called if there's actually a match, if there was a date for that, um, if there was a date in our database that correlated to this particular day of the month. If not, then we just color it gray. And that's why when I showed you the demonstration, everything was gray um, because I'm not actually calling this parse database, so we're not going to get any matches. Um, but you could, and this could be as complicated as you want. You could have as many colors as you need. And then we just add the buttons to the view, right? Um, I mentioned up here that I had this uh, remove, uh, where is it? This remove tags call. That All that does is we have to make sure that we go through and remove each button from the screen every time we either go to the previous month or the new month because there might not, there's going to, you know, uh, there's a lot of different months that don't have the same amount of days. And so if everything will get screwed up if we leave them on there. So we basically get rid of them, and then um, we call that method again to uh, reinsert the buttons. All right? So that's pretty much how everything works here. I will show you that um, when you click on a button, you'll notice I have, uh, where is it in here? Oh, right here. So this add target selector pop-up info, that's basically saying, hey, when you click on one of the buttons, we're going to go ahead and call and do what's inside this method here. And we're sending in an ID, which um, we're able to create a button object from that sender. And then I can go and look and see um, what the current title is. I already know the current month and the current year 
because those are class variables. And so based upon that, I can figure out exactly what day was clicked. And then so I save that as a new date, and um, that gets saved to this uh, parse spot variable, which remember, that's one of our external global variables. And so when um, the screen pops up, this is a um, the pop-up here, then I can pass that date to that, and I can do all kinds of stuff on that pop-up screen. You know, maybe it was a, a journal entry. I could show the entry from that, grabbing it again from whatever database system I have. So I know this is, you know, not the um, easiest thing to understand, but hopefully I explained that clearly. Um, that's all the code, though, that goes with this. That's everything. Um, I'm going to, like I said, I will actually, I'm just going to, post this whole project, I'll, I'll zip it up and make this available so you can look at it. In the following tutorial to this, a follow-up tutorial to this, I'm going to show you how to actually create this pop-up screen. And um, I didn't actually uh, do this. Um, I used, uh, I used um, Martin Juhaz, I think that's how you pronounce it. He put this on GitHub. It's a great little system for creating a pop-up screen. And I'll show you how to implement that, though. All right. Thanks. Um, let me know if you have any questions. And as always, please subscribe.